Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Welcome to podcast number 21 by me, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, here in Seattle. It is March 9th, 2017. You're listening to Hollow Earth Radio. So, thank you, Hollow Earth Radio, for having me do this show on your airwaves, and I really appreciate that. And I'm going to today talk a little bit about my performance that I did uh, with Julie Cassiapo. I hope I'm saying her name right. Uh, I did a show at the Good Shepherd Center on February 27th. 2017 a show called House of Julie where she sang some jazz tunes and told some sort of jokes and a little comedy routine and me and a few other musicians were on stage with her I wore my metallic green mermaid pants and my light up shoes that are metallic silver like chrome and they light up with LED lights in the soles and they're really beautiful shoes that I got splurged on and actually found a really good deal. And, but to be honest with you, I had a fun time performing. I did about seven minutes of, of Kring speak. And actually the next few minutes I'm going to play you. I recorded my rehearsal. I rehearsed a few times and did it. I'm actually feeling really, really, really stressed out right now. My breast biopsy was fine and I'm apparently healthy, no breast cancer in my body. Uh, But then my filling fell out. So I went to the dentist yesterday and had my filling redone thanks to my Obamacare, affordable health care. I'm really, 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 really stressed out that they might take our health care away from us, the Republicans. And, um, replace it with something far worse than Obamacare. I know that the only people that seem to like the Affordable Health Care Act are people like me who are low income, who are basically uh, living in states like Washington, where I live here in Seattle, where Medicare or Medicaid or whatever the heck it's called was expanded. But what boggles my mind, because I have no monthly fee, my health care is basically free. I basically have socialized health care, which is amazing. I can go to the eye doctor, I can go to the dentist, I can go to the regular doctor. My breast biopsy and ultrasound and mammograms were all covered by my Obamacare, no bill. So not everything is covered. I found out at the dentist that I actually have a mild crack in one of my teeth and they recommend me getting a cap on it, like a crown, which would be $1,100 is the normal price. And my Obamacare does not cover that. So I am signing up. I only make about 1500 bucks a month on average because I work full time as a freelance art model. And my income goes up and down, but an average is about 1500 a month. So I'm going to prove that with my income tax to the people at the dental clinic, and I'm going to hopefully get a sliding scale dental care. And they recommend I get a crown because if I let my tooth get worse and it eventually cracks and it falls apart, then it will be more expensive and more difficult to fix. So I could also just fly to Costa Rica and have my teeth worked on. That's what my dad did. My dad my dad makes good money and still works full time at age 71. And he has health insurance, supposedly, which I guess is pretty good for everything except not dental. And so he actually, it would be $20,000 for him to get the implants in the back of his mouth that he needed for his molars. So he flew to Costa Rica on the recommendation of a friend of his who did it. And with airfare, hotel, and all the dental work that my dad needed, excuse me, it was $5,000 for what would have been $20,000 in the United States for just the dental work. No hotel, no airfare. So Costa Rica, I also know a guy who flies his whole family for family vacations to Poland and they visit relatives there. And while they're there, they all go to the dentist because in Poland, they charge reasonable amount of money for dental work and they're good dentists there. So I know that there's people <clears throat> that go to other countries, you, Americans that fly to other countries for dental work because they charge much more fair prices in other countries. In the United States, we have what's called price gouging in our medical system. We we treat our healthcare industry as if it's a commercial for-profit industry, and then we lie about it. There's price gouging. They They consider us customers, 
and they consider health insurance companies a marketplace, like as if it's some kind of commercial business. I'm very offended by that. You know, to me, healthcare is a public service and it should be single payer, nonprofit, healthcare for all, young, old, rich, poor, sick, healthy, everyone. Everyone deserves health care. Same with rent control. Everyone deserves rent control. You know, my rent is a third of my income because I have a Section 8 voucher. And even before I got my Section 8 voucher, which I was on a waiting list, I guess about, apparently 10 or 20,000 people tried to get on in the lottery. And then they only called 5,000 names. And I was one of the lucky that they called for the Section 8 and then my number came up about a year and a half or two years after I was first told I was on the list. And thankfully, I was already renting from a landlord who intentionally kept the rent lower than market rate because he told me, well, I make enough of a profit. And he likes to make available uh, rentals to people who are not wealthy because Seattle is mostly wealthy people at this point. So <clears throat> I know somebody whose rent was 700 for like a funky art studio type apartment. And then new people bought the building and the rent went up to $2,100. So basically they tripled the rent and just gave them about 90. I think the rule is they only have to give you 90 days notice. And this happened to me twice. Uh, I li was living in a building and the rent was okay. I could afford it. It wasn't really cheap, but it wasn't super as high as market rate. And then new people took over the building and they jacked the rent up four or five hundred dollars. I think I had rent that was only seven hundred dollars, and then the, the new rent was going to be twelve hundred or fourteen hundred. Uh, and they acted as if they were doing us a favor because they're remodeling the building and making it really nice and jacking the rent way, 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 way up to improve the quality for everyone. So basically, I had to move out of that building because I could not afford several hundred dollars more per month for rent. And then I found another building and rented it from this guy who was keeping the rent a little bit lower than market rate. And then this lady bought the building and she jacked the rent up only about $300, but that was enough to kick me out of that building. And so now I live in a building where the landlord charges less than market rate and I got my section eight. So my rent went down even lower. So now my rent is only a third of my income. And I wish that everybody's rent could be a third of their income. Like if somebody is wealthy and they make $10,000 a month, then they can afford, you know, thirty-five or $3,000 a month for rent. But if you're like me and you make 1500 bucks a month, then rent, my rent is 550 which is reasonable to me because I only make 1500 bucks a month. So you see what I'm saying? If somebody makes $30,000 a month, then they could afford $10,000 a month in rent. And if somebody makes you know, $3,000 a month, then they can afford $1,000 a month for rent. So that's the way I think it should work. In my version of Utopia, everybody rich and poor would pay a third of their income in rent. And everybody would get nonprofit socialized health care like they do in most other countries. I have a friend in Norway and a friend in England, and I've asked them many, many questions about their health care. And of course, it's not perfect. But they pay taxes, which aren't as high as what we're told here. And they can go to the doctor and not get a big medical bill. And it's considered very normal and just a basic human service. So just like mass transit, I mean, imagine our healthcare system is so expensive. It's kind of like, imagine like taking a train somewhere and them telling you it's going to cost you a thousand dollars for a train ticket you know, to go like across town, like, you know, for a bus ticket, like to, to commute into, into Seattle from Linwood, it's going to cost a thousand dollars. That's kind of how much our prices are in healthcare. A thousand dollars, like women who have C-sections are charged $30,000 unless they have a good insurance uh, plan. So that's really ridiculous. So our system needs to change. See, again, I'm happy with my Obamacare. Uh, but only people that are low income that live in states. See, I don't understand why all 50 states, we're not a very united states, are we? We we say we're united, United States, but we're not that united. So I wish that all 50 states would expand Medicare, Medicaid, whatever it's called. And also it's sad that my mom is on uh, Social Security and she is in her upper 60s and her health care is worse than mine and she is a low income senior with more health concerns than me and her health care is worse than mine it's not free mine is free and i'm 
you know, only 48 years old and I'm low income. So I think everybody deserves the kind of health care that I have, which I'm really happy with it. Although I wish crowns were covered. I wish that um, crowns were at least 50% off for people like me. So like, you know, 500 bucks instead of, you know, 550 instead of 1100. So I'm also stressed out because my car is having issues. I have a smart car and thankfully I know an independent mechanic on Capitol Hill who charges a reasonable amount to work on uh, foreign cars. Because if you take the car, if I take my smart car to the Mercedes Benz dealership, which is where I'm supposed to take it officially, they actually refuse to clean parts and they will actually just say, oh no, we have to replace this part. It'll be $3,500, $3,500 for parts and labor. That's what they told me when I was having an issue with my clutch actuator. So I took my car into this amazing guy. I hope I'm allowed to say this on my radio show. Christopher Goodwin Motorsports on Capitol Hill. He's great. So if you have a German car or a European car in general, if you have a foreign car that's not made in America, Christopher Goodwin on Capitol Hill Motorsports is your guy. And if not, if, if you have a car that he doesn't know how to work on, he might be able to refer you to another mechanic. He seems to know his stuff. He has a, a small independent shop on Capitol Hill and I've taken my car to, to him. He made a repair. He cleaned and he cleaned and lubed and readjusted my clutch actuator in my smart car. And it was about $300 or so, give or take, maybe $350. And it was, um, he was honest with me about what I needed and the the Mercedes Benz dealership they wanted to replace not just my clutch actuator but the two other parts that go with it they basically implied to me that they couldn't guarantee it would work if they just and they implied that they couldn't just clean and lube my they couldn't just clean and lube my clutch actuator they had to take all three parts out and replace them all with all new parts, which would be $3,500. So there's a summary of that. So now I want to play for you my rehearsal of the poetry that I did. I really did have fun on the Julie Cassiapo show, House of Julie. And there was jazz musicians, piano, bass, different men and women singing different solo things. I'm sorry, I don't remember any of their names. The whole thing is a blur. I just had fun. It was free. Nobody got paid. It was all volunteer. And it's a beautiful space. The chapel at uh, Good Shepherd Center in Seattle in Wallingford. And she has a cat named Baki, Baki the Chapel Cat. And he hangs out in the chapel while we're performing. It's kind of cool. So he's a cool cat. I took a selfie with the kitty and I took a portrait of the kitty. My cat also, I have a cat named Kisun. He continues to thrive on raw meat food. At the health food pet store, I get him raw cat food, raw meat diet, and he's thriving. Uh, if you're interested, if you have a dog or cat that has any health issues, or even if they're healthy, a good thing to do for them is to stop feeding them commercial cooked meat food and put them on a raw meat diet, frozen and freeze dried raw meat buy it at the health food pet store and their health will improve probably and of course I'm not a vet so I can't officially say that but if you go online and look for Dr. Karen Becker she's an actual certified vet with all the right degrees and she's an expert in natural nutrition for cats and dogs she seems to really know her stuff because there's good and bad ways of switching your cat or dog to raw meat food so check that out I'm also gonna see Temple Grandin She's the autistic woman that Claire Danes played in a movie called Temple Grandin, Seeing in Pictures. She is this amazing genius type autistic woman who is an expert. She has a PhD in animal behavioral science as well as she is an expert basically in saying what it's like to be autistic and the pros and cons of what it's like to be her. And she has a message for educating people with autism on the spectrum and or this could apply to all education. She says that the best thing to do for all kids, especially if they're autistic, is to find out what they're good at and help them build that up instead of nitpick on what their deficits are and what their weaknesses are. You know, instead of trying to just make them be well-rounded and well-adjusted, 
you know, like for instance, if they're horrible at math, but really good at science or art or, or poetry or, or singing or dancing or acting, let them do that and vice versa. If they suck at the arts, but they're really good at math and science, then let them focus on their math and science. You know, let them cope with their deficits and, you know, survive their deficits and deal with it. Like if they can't socialize very well, that's okay. But if they're really good at math and they really enjoy math, help them with their math and help them build that up because then they can, they can become adults that have the highest self-esteem possible if they feel good about their math skills and don't give them a hard time about their lack of social skills or their lack of artistic skills, you know. I know most people don't value artistic skills, they just would value the math skills, but I would say all skills are valuable. And in fact, when I went to school, my mom put me in alternative school part of the time and nobody picked on me there, which was really great because I got picked on in public school severely because I was kind of a weird little kid. So I dressed different and I my social skills were a bit odd. I was kind of shy and curious about other people and I didn't have any fake social persona didn't have like an egotistical attitude. So I didn't really have much of an armor. So other kids would pick on me. My mom put me in an alternative school and we learned more about Native Americans and art. And we went on field trips and instead of just reading books, we actually went out to the Puget Sound and studied the plants and animals of Puget Sound and learned about Native American food recipes and the wisdom of taking care of Mother Earth. So I'm really happy about that. And I learned about other cultures. I learned about France and I learned about Germany and I learned about other languages. And this was when I was in fourth, fifth and sixth grade. So I learned many things. But I went, I did go to three schools in fifth grade and I have some post-traumatic stress uh, disorder from some of my childhood things. But whatever, this isn't about that. This is about me now. It is March 9th, 2017. I'm 48 years old. And I... I'm going to go see Temple Grandin on Vashon Island. She's coming June 10th on Vashon Island. Get your tickets if you want at the Vashon Island Arts Center. My mom also has some necklaces in an art show on Vashon Island right now. I think through the end of this month, um, my mom has two necklaces. And I'm not going to say her name because she likes to be private in terms of Goddess Crane being her daughter, but she is an artist. My mom is a clay and metal artist, and she makes really fine art that's one of a kind and pretty expensive, and sometimes it sells and sometimes it doesn't. And my stepfather died a couple years ago suddenly of a heart attack, so she's still healing and adjusting from that and trying to get back on her feet and promote her art, and that's what I'm going to say about that. But I will say I was raised by an artist mother and I was raised by a father who wrote, wrote, who used to write comedy and folk music and sing and play guitar. And he also was a tennis teacher. So I was raised in a kind of creative, interesting way in San Diego, California. And I'm excited that my dad wants to go see Temple Grandin with me on June 10th. And she's going to talk about animal behavior. My dad and I are both animal lovers and she's kind of an expert. She helped improve slaughterhouse Uh, cattle shoots. I don't know what you call it when the cattle walk to their death, basically. I mean, if if we're going to slaughter cattle, which we're probably going to keep doing as human beings, may as well make it more humane. And so her designs have actually saved the cattle people money. That's all they really care about is the money. But she cares about the actual ethics and the animals and the, she doesn't want the animals to be stressed out. She wants them to be as unstressed as possible. So her designs have actually helped, and I think they're used in 50% of the cattle slaughterhouses in the United States of America. I'm not sure if they use hers in Europe. I I don't think she's very famous in Europe. Spread the word about Temple Grandin, everyone. I really love Temple Grandin. She's great. Look her up online, T-E-M-P-L-E-G-R-A-N-D-I-N, Temple Grandin. She's a, a great, unique, very interesting human being. Her voice is a little grating. She's autistic and her voice is like a little bit, you know, um, abrasive, but she's so intelligent and her brain is so unique. She basically has a photographic memory and she's had to learn to speak in um, by memorizing sort of a script because her brain is so different than regular people's brains. So I'm fascinated by her. I almost think sometimes I'm a bit autistic in my own way. Maybe being artistic overlaps with being autistic in some kind of way. So now I'm going to play for you 
the rehearsal that I recorded, the poetry that I did, we're also going to see Tom Petty. I wanted to say, I'm going to see Temple Grandin on June 10th with my dad on Vashon Island. And we're going to see Tom Petty at Safeco Field on what, August 18th or 19th. I'm pretty sure it's August 19th in the evening. And Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers has been my favorite rock and roll band since I was 11 years old. Um, for many, many reasons. He symbolizes that I'm going to be okay. I was traumatized by moving from California with my mom abruptly when I was nine years old and really sad and grieving California. And then I heard Refugee on a jukebox in a pizza parlor on Whidbey Island. I'm going to have to write a book someday about some of these stories. I've had so many interesting experiences as a child growing up the way I grew up on in San Diego and on Whidbey Island and partly in Petaluma, California at an artist commune called Evolution Art Institute with my mom. For a few months, we stayed there, and I had a, a, a lot of adventures there, pros and cons. But uh, my childhood was definitely eccentric and unusual, and my parents are both pretty eccentric people in their own kind of way, and so am I. So that's how I was raised. So my mom's really into Eastern philosophy, and she loves nature, and my dad is really into comedy and music, and... What else? I don't know. So here's here's my rehearsal that I recorded for my poetry spoken word House of Julie show that I did. Many thanks to Julie Cassiapo who invited me to be a guest on her show. Here we go. Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen Radio. Hollow Earth Radio. Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. Thanks for joining me. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take democracy away. Please don't let hypocrisy stay. We're going to make America great again. We're going to take $54 billion and remove it from the military budget. And we're going to use it to build solar power plants and clean up the water infrastructure and make drinking water safe for everyone nationwide. Put people to work. We're going to take $54 billion and help clean up Fukushima and cooperate with other nations. Get off the power station. Power tripper, soul ripper. Heil Trumpler, no. Heil Trumpler, no. Heil Trumpler, no. You're fired, Mr. Trump. You're hired, Bernie C. Sanders, sand, sand, sandstone, moon dune, moonstone, sand dune. Increase cooperation, decrease the corporation. Incast the outcast, outcast the incast. Decrease the corporation, increase cooperation. Authentic ejaculation of my soul. Molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll. Blowing status quo. Intimacy chasing me. Feel like it's erasing me. Self-abandonment got me stranded again. Polluted and uprooted. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Shred the pain, drain the stain. Oh, just take me away to Spain. Gaining light a healthy flight for freedom and embracing grace. Moonshone face. Speak not too loud, but proud. Paradox through the clock and the hard cock. Sharks in the dark mark me. Embarking on an odyssey of synchronicity, serendipity. Go ahead, suck me in, Ophelia. Melodrama, Pyrana, eating bone and flesh. Pour me, ah, 
Whore me, bore me, adore me, store me in a cool, dry place. This rhyme is divine, yeah, right. I fight despite the miracle of my birth and question my worth. Power tripper, soul ripper. No thanks to the tanks of skank. Healing reveals the dreams. You are the carrot you are chasing, capiche? Integrate the carrot, capiche, capiche? I in minority wishing not conformity. We are here all one together. Wash away the fertile dung. This has been sung. Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the cring. Catch the wind song spiral drive. Crack the code left and right node. I wander and I wander, tripping over grasshoppers, moon hollers, key robbers. Enchanted land, smoky hands, rough and cracked. Take this sand and stand alone. I present the present. Desert the desert. Exercise, bring exorcism. Cleanse. Shaka shaka. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams. Inner energy, life force, come forth. Incast the outcast, outcast the incast. Increase cooperation, decrease the corporation. You are the carrot you are chasing. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take democracy away. Please don't let hypocrisy stay. Fifty-four billion dollars will be reduced from the defense budget and used to build solar power plants across the nation and will be used to clean up the water infrastructure and will be used to help clean up Fukushima. We're going to make America great again. Yeah, right. I fight despite the miracle of my birth, questioning my worth. Authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange liquid glow, blowing status quo, anger takes its toll. Intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. Heil Trumpler, no. Heil Trumpler, no. Heil Trumpler, no. Mr. Trump, you're fired. Bernie Sanders, you're hired. Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Sandstone. Moon dune. Moonstone. Sand dune. High bloom through the roots in cahoots. Sliding doors. Eyes adore. Ocean beam. Come clean. Come clean. Manifesting dreams. Black fire feather rain straining the stream of consciousness again. Volcano ash erupting green. Enchanted fingers filter rain. You are the carrot you are chasing, capiche? Integrate the carrot, capiche, capiche? I in minority wishing not conformity, reality thriving on abnormality, eccentricity, synchronicity, synchronicity, serendipity. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Incast the outcast. Outcast the incast. Increase cooperation. Decrease the corporation. Shred the pain. Drain the stain. Oh, just take me away to Spain. Gaining light, a healthy flight for freedom and embracing grace. Moon shone face. Speak not too loud, but proud. Paradox. Through the clock in the hard cock. Sharks mark me in the dark, emba- embarking on an odyssey of synchronicity. Go ahead, suck me in Ophelia, melodrama, pyrana, eating bone and flesh. Pour me, ah, uh, whore me, bore me, store me in a cool, dry place. This rhyme is divine, yeah, right. I fight despite the miracle of my birth and question my worth. 
Intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. You are the carrot you are chasing, capiche? Integrate the carrot, capiche, capiche? You are the carrot you are chasing, capiche? Integrate the carrot, capiche, capiche? Incast the outcast, outcast the incast. Increase cooperation, decrease the corporation. Make America great again, solar power. Thank you, Jimmy Carter. I love you, Bernie Sanders. You're fired, Donald Trump. You're hired, Bernie Sanders. Got a scring, Shannon Kringen. Improv. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Skies are gray. You, never you never know, dear, know dear, how much I, how I love, much you. I love you. you. Please don't take, Please don't democracy, take democracy away. away. Please don't let Please don't hypocrisy let stay. Hail Trumpler! Hail Trumpler! Hail Trumpler! Hail Trumpler! Hail Trumpler! Hail No, you're fired! You're fired! Mr. Trump! You're hired! You're hired! Sanders! 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 Sandstone! Sandstone! Moonstone! High bloom through the roots. In cahoots, in cahoots, sliding doors, sliding doors eyes, adore. Like eyes adore, ocean beam, ocean come, beam. Clean, ocean come, clean. Ocean come clean, come clean, manifesting, manifesting, dream. manifesting dream. Black, black fire, feathery, black fire, feathery. Black fire, feathery. Black fire, feathery. Black fire, straining the stream straining of consciousness stream. again, consciousness volcano again. ash volcano erupting ash green, erupting green. Green. enchanted green. fingers, enchanted filters, fingers. Rain. Enchanted rain. rain, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Shannon be planning and be planning and be planning. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. 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 Incast the outcast. The outcast. The incast. The incast. Decrease the corporation. Increase cooperation. Cooperation. Fifty-four million. No. Fifty-four billion dollars to make America great again. We're gonna. Cut the, cut the military defense budget by fifty-four by billion dollars, and, we're going, and we're going to invest it in solar, in solar power, power, power plants. Power plants. We're going to take fifty-four take billion dollars and, and, and invest it in renewable, in energy, renewable sources energy sources and cleaning up, and the, toxic up the toxic water, water systems, systems that are systems old that and are crumbling and, and leaching crumbling toxic and leaching chemicals, chemicals and metals and harming people. And metals. We are going to take fifty-four billion dollars to make the world great again and help clean up Fukushima and build huge solar power. Power plants. Power plants. Increase, power plants. Cooperation. Increase cooperation. cooperation. Decrease the corporation. Decrease the corporation. You, the are the you, are you are the carrot you are chasing. Capiche. Integrate the carrot. Capiche. Capiche. I am minority. Wishing that conformity. Reality thriving on. Abnormality. Eccentricity. Synchronicity. Serendipity. Authentic ejaculation. Of my, soul, of my soul, molten orange, molten liquid, orange liquid glow, liquid glow. Anger, takes anger takes its toll, toll. Anger glowing, takes status, glowing status quo, status quo. intimacy chasing me, feel like it's a race, feel like it's a race, self abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers fill to rain, inner energy come forth, inner energy life force. Come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth. Healing reveals the dream, all one, alone, 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 alone. 
You are the carrot you are chasing. Integrate the carrot. Capiche? I in minority, wishing not conformity. Reality thriving Abnormality, eccentricity, synchronicity. Increase cooperation. Decrease the corporation. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Now I wanted to say something about feminism. I was going to say, um, so what you just listened to was about 13 minutes of me, kind of uh, three different versions of my rehearsing because I sort of did a semi-improvisational performance at the Good Shepherd Center and I sort of did a partly memorized poems that I've written and so those were all mixed together in that kind of way although I forgot to say Tom Petty widens my jetty during that performance I think my live performance I think I might have said it on the recording that you just heard but I didn't I don't even know if anybody listens if anybody's actually listening to my podcast feel free to let me know even if you don't like what I do (laughs) say I hate you no you can say whatever you want but um Isn't it horrifying that the president of the United States now is Mr. Donald Trump? That's just horrifying to me. Um, The new replacement for the Affordable Health Care Act sounds really, really, really like a crime against humanity. Only the wealthy benefit from the new plan, apparently. So I'm really sad about that. But I wanted to talk about feminism. Forgive me. I have post-traumatic stress, OCD, borderline... um, what else? Cyclothymia, various health, health, mental health issues. But I'm also like a really talented artist in some ways and a really good figure model for artists. And I'm an animal lover and a plant lover. I'm sensitive. I'm kind in some ways. And I don't have a lot of friends, close friends, but um, I love the music of Tom Petty and Tori Amos. And, you know, I'm a good person in some ways, but in other ways, I think I'm uh, really a stressed out human being. So I wanted to talk about feminism. Um, I pretty much was bullied and harassed mostly by girls in junior high and grade school and in high school. And I have a fear of women and I'm sad about that. I feel very sad about it. And it might have something to do with the fact that my grandma was kind of a bossy person. Now my grandma wasn't mean, but she was a bit domineering and she was kind of like very masculine. My grandma was really into riding horses. She was kind of like female John Wayne. She wasn't real comfortable with her emotions. She didn't like people to cry in the house. She was kind of macho. She was kind of, and my step-grandfather, my real grandfather died um, a tragic death of, of a, in a car accident when I was just a few months old, and I have no memory of any of that. I never met my grandfather, and my grandfather on my dad's side also died of a heart attack or stroke suddenly when my dad was in his 20s. So basically, I never met either one of my grandfathers, and sadly, both my parents were close to their fathers, but not their mothers. Both of my parents had kind of a, kind of a sad relationship with their own mothers. So that also could be why I have a fear of women, because my parents were both wounded by their mothers, and they were closer to their fathers. Their fathers were kind of nicer people in some ways, I guess, or more nurturing. So I come from an atypical family, which has men that seem kinder than the women. Although my mom is a pretty nice lady, but she's got her kind of dark edge. You know, she doesn't want anyone to know that I'm her daughter because she's afraid it might hurt her reputation as an artist. And that really hurts my feelings. But I don't want to say that because that'll upset her if she knows I even said that just now. Oh, well, I just said that on public radio. There it is. Well, let's just say that I'm afraid of women. And maybe it's because I feel competitive with other women. I don't know. And it's sad. And Tori Amos talks about this, about how women can betray other women and how sad and, and, and it's, it's, it's very heartbreaking and very painful when women are vicious to other women. So feminism, to me, you know, there are some women who are sort of feminazis, which I would say they're getting carried away and they're wanting the pendulum to swing so that women take over and boss people around, men or women. So if a woman is going to act like a male chauvinist pig, she's not really a feminist. A real feminist is someone who believes in equality, equality for men and women. That, that would also, to me, a, a feminist would also expand that desire for equality 
to include plants and animals, to be respectful to plants and animals, to treat uh, poor people, elderly people, handicapped people, you know, to have compassion and empathy for those less fortunate or for the weaker and to want to protect and take care of as opposed to being domineering and macho and being a fascist. So women who get carried away and are very judgmental and cruel and acting like strong, you know, it's good for women to be strong. I totally agree with that. It's good to be strong. But if you get caught up in thinking that women should take over the planet as opposed to men bossing everyone around, if women just boss everyone around, then that's pretty similar to if men boss everyone around. I guess it depends. If you have a woman who has good ideas and she's the boss, I guess you can trust her. But if she's acting like a male chauvinist pig, then it's really no better. So in other words, my grandmother was kind of a nice person, but she wasn't real sensitive emotionally. She was really into her horses and she wouldn't visit my mom and I. We had to go visit her. She'd be like, well, I miss you guys, but I'm really busy with my horses. So if you want to see me, you can come visit me anytime you want, but I can't visit you because I'm too busy. So basically, we always had to visit my grandma and she wouldn't visit us. And my mom said she felt like my grandma didn't really care that much about her art and wasn't really that engaged. Also, my grandmother wasn't real intellectual. And my mom is very intellectual and likes to have interesting philosophical discussions about things. And my grandma just doesn't didn't have that personality. So they just didn't click on that mental level. Apparently, my grandfather was very intelligent and sensitive and really into math. And so my mom and him really bonded. And then he ends up dying. So my grandmother was kind of, my, my mom, I witnessed as a child, my mom and grandma having a not a very good relationship. And I got along better with my grandmother than my mom did. But there was still kind of this weird feeling around my grandmother, like she was the boss. You better do what she says. And she sort of would shame you if you didn't in a, in a subtle way. You know, she didn't yell at me or say mean things to me, but it was sort of implied that she knew what was best and I felt kind of like not real respected as an intelligent human being to some extent. So she kind of dominated in a certain way. And so I think I grew up with that kind of feeling and sensing that my mom was uncomfortable with my grandmother. So there was sort of this tense feeling. And so then when I went to school and I was around other girls, you know, I was kind of a tomboy. And, and a lot of my friends as a little kid were boys and I would run around and roller skate and I could run really fast. And I guess I did feel kind of competitive with men, with boys and girls as a kid. And I didn't really know where I fit in socially. And I was kind of shy and really loved animals and plants and kind of lived in my own dream world. And I was very creative and I wanted to dress in my own way and not conform. And even as a young kid, so uh, I didn't really know how to play the social games that kids play. So, oh, well, that's why I sometimes feel like I'm a little bit autistic because I don't know how to play power trip, competitive, egotistical games and do social masks. So I grew up with this. And so that makes me think about feminism and how I, I basically totally believe in feminism. Yes, I do. But I believe in real feminism, which is about equality and respect, about how women should be paid as much as men and that women are just as valuable as men. And I do think men and women are different. And I also think that all of us are androgynous. I think just because my, my body parts are feminine, I have a vagina and breasts and a man has a penis, I do feel like all people have male and female traits within their psyche, even if their body is male or female. And then we have people that are transgender and we have people that are hermaphrodites, literally hermaphrodites who have both male and female anatomy and they're going through surgery or changes if they're transgender or maybe they're not going through surgery, but they feel like they're a man or a woman that's different from the sex that they were born with in terms of anatomical, you know, body parts. So I'm somebody, who, thankfully, I was raised, both my parents are very non-judgmental. Like, so they basically raised me to not be prejudiced against people and to um, accept people as individuals, no matter what culture they're from, whether they're black or white or Asian or Hispanic or gay or straight or bi or transgender. I wasn't raised to be prejudiced and, and categorize people in that way. And I'm very grateful for that, that my parents raised me to basically think for myself and question reality.
and not just go along and conform with, you know, conventional ways. So feminism to me is the opposite of being a bully. I feel like if you're macho and you bully people, then that's not, you know, like there are men who are feminists. You know, I think that um, progressive men like Bernie Sanders, you know, he, I think, has respect for Native Americans and for um, low income people and underdogs. And basically women are kind of underdogs in this culture. We still make less than men. We still have less power than men. And some men are threatened by that. And that's sad. And I think Bernie Sanders, to me, seems like a feminist. He seems like somebody who who respects women and respects Native Americans, respects basically minorities, respects people that are low income, that doesn't see them as weak, sees them as just different than the wealthy elite who run things. So basically equality, feminism is about equality and respect and being fair and ethical towards all humans, especially towards women. That's why they call it feminism. And as opposed to masculinism, I guess they don't have a word for that. I would also say there should be a word called speciesism. Is there a word called speciesism? Because I feel like just like racism, sexism, classism, speciesism would be about humans feeling like they're, we are superior to other species. And I think that's sad. I mean, just look at slaughterhouses and you can see I'm a semi-vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian off and on since I was 15. Right now I'm dating a guy who loves meat, so I've been eating more meat with him, but I've been feeling weird about it because the way they treat the animals is so awful. The way human beings dominate, you know, I wrote a poem about it called Wake Up and Smell the Hitler Done to Mother Earth. Wake Up and Smell the Hitler Done to Mother Earth. And then I talk about different animals and how we dominate animals. Human beings dominate plants and animals. Also, global warming. I feel like it doesn't matter to me if global warming, I mean, I believe global warming is mostly caused by human pollution and what we're doing to this planet. But even if it's partly the earth changing and evolving and doing what the earth does, so what? Who cares? We should still be taking care of the earth. We should still expand solar power wind power, geothermal power, electric cars, etc., plant more trees, you know, stop fracking, stop coal mining, stop doing things that rape and pillage planet Earth. So to me, being a feminist means also that we care about other species, that we have, we believe in equality, not just between men and women and transgender and gay and bi and straight and all the different kinds of humans on this planet. Also, it would be the same thing for like this whole make America great again, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make this country great again or better than it is right now. But to have this attitude that we are the United States and we are better than all other countries, I don't like that. If I had to carry a flag, it would be planet Earth. It'd be like make Earth great again. You know, take care of planet Earth, clean up Fukushima. I don't know what we can do about Fukushima, but we need to be doing something to help the Fukushima situation. Also clean up the water in this country. There's all kinds of problems with water from old pipes, from chemicals leaking into the water, etc. So we could put millions and billions and trillions of dollars, you know, $54 billion instead of going to the defense. I'm so offended that they're increasing the defense budget and then they're cutting veterans benefits, cutting um, health care benefits, cutting somebody told me they work with veterans and the military is now taking away their free military cell phones and they're messing with their health care and they're messing with their daycare so that is so sad and disgusting and it's abusive and cruel and a criminal to me if you I don't even like the military but I believe because I don't like war and the military prison industrial complex that upsets me I would never want to join the military because I don't trust the military and I don't want to kill people and go to combat and go to war if I had to join the military, I would volunteer to be a nurse. I'd say, okay, I'll be a medic. I'll be a nurse. I'll help take care of people. I'm not going to shoot anybody. I don't like guns. I don't want a gun. I've never touched a gun. I have no desire to have a gun. So I'm just not a military person. But I do have compassion for veterans. And I feel like when a veteran serves in the military, they should get the best health care possible for the rest of their lives. And they should get a good pension. 
when they retire or they're injured. Especially if they have post-traumatic stress disorder, they should get the best psychiatric care that they can, and it should all be free because they served in the military. That's how I feel about that. So I feel like it's so sad to me that the current administration, the Trump people, Trump Incorporated, may as well turn the White House into a casino at this point. Just call it Trump, the Trump House. You know, there's no more White House, no more democracy. They should just may as well just be honest about how corrupt they are and how they want to bleed money into war and Wall Street and, and um, prison and then cut the funding for social programs. And like Martin Luther King said, you know, a nation that increases military spending and cuts all social programs is approaching spiritual death. And so, you know, there's no heart, no soul. Martin Luther King, I think, was a bit of a feminist. I know in his personal life, apparently he wasn't that nice to his wife, but I'm talking about politically, he was a feminist in terms of having compassion for minorities and social, uh, civil rights, as well as poverty. See, Martin Luther King, the best speech that I ever heard him do was beyond Vietnam. It was, a, it was criticizing war, criticizing how we spend money in this country on war while people suffer and there's more and more poverty in the world. And how um, labeling the Viet Cong the enemy is a dangerous thing. To classify entire groups of people as enemies, just like saying Muslims are bad, Mexicans are bad, whatever they say is bad. You know, even, even classifying white people, if you go around criticizing people for having white privilege and you, and you lump white people together with bad people, I think that's also a, not a good thing. To, pre to be prejudiced against masses, massive groups of people men, women, white people, black people, Hispanic people, Muslim people, Christian people, to lump people together like that is so destructive and abusive and stereotyping people is not a good thing. So I wish that we would cooperate. There's all these different thoughts and feelings I have about all of this stuff. So clean up Fukushima, man. And I love Jimmy Carter. I love the Jimmy Carter seems like a feminist to me. He seems like a real Christian. Like I myself am not religious, but I'm very spiritual, meaning I believe that we're all connected on this planet. And I have respect for all different cultures. And I have respect for people that are loving and helping and being kind to one another. Those are my favorite people. To me, to be spiritual means that you feel connected and that you believe what you do comes back to you. So I don't know what to do about fanatical, violent people who retaliate against people and come from a place of hate because to fight against those people and want to just kill those people, it just creates more anger and more desire for revenge. And then, th and then the cycle of violence just continues. So there's no solution to that other than love and kindness and try to take away the reason why people are so angry. Also, there was a thing that happened the other day. There was this black woman who saved a cop. There was a cop that was wrestling with, a, I think, probably a mentally ill person. And this guy was trying to grab the cop's gun. And the woman got out of her car and jumped on one of the men's backs, basically, I don't know who, the cop or the other person, to try to get the gun away, try, to try to get them from stopping. She was trying to prevent anyone from getting shot. And What's sad to me is that people said, yeah, she saved a cop. Isn't that great? She was a black woman and she's a hero because she saved a white cop. And I guess the guy wrestling with the cop was also a white guy. But he apparently was kind of mentally ill because he was going berserk and trying to grab the cop's gun. So what I think is that it's really great that she also saved the guy, the mentally ill person trying to harm the cop. She saved him from getting shot as well. I am happy that nobody got shot. I'm not just happy that the cop didn't get shot. I am happy that the mentally ill, violent, angry person also did not get shot because chances are one of those two men would have shot each other if nobody had intervened. So I'm really, so isn't that sad that people just say, oh, she saved a cop. That's great. What about the other guy? She also prevented the other guy from getting shot by intervening in a good way. So I would say that it's, it's, you know, I don't like it when they just shoot people because they're afraid that they're going to get shot because then you become the shooter. You don't want to get shot by somebody. So then you shoot them first and then you're the shooter. So 
that's really sad. So it would be nice if humans would evolve past that and instead try to just injure somebody and incapacitate them if they're trying to, to harm you. Try to incapacitate them, but try not to kill them. They're trying to kill you. So if you kill them, then you're just being like them. So I don't think enough people like think about that. So, you know, if somebody was trying to kill my mother, I suppose that I would want to save my mother's life, but I would not want to kill that other person. If possible, I would like to just wound them and not kill them. So I don't know what I would do. I don't even want to think about that. But, you know, it's it's a, it's a hard situation to deal with. So <laughs> this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. You're listening to Hollow Earth Radio, Goddess Kring podcast number 21, March 9th, 2017. I'm going to see Tom Petty with my dad and I'm going to see Temple Grandin with my dad. And I'm really happy that I have a dad that wants to go to these events and my mom is living in the country on Whidbey Island and I go visit her and we do more quiet things together although we recently went to the art opening on Vashon Island where she is part of that and that was really fun so okay I've rambled on enough today I'll see you next week if anybody's actually listening feel free to write me shannonkringen.com is my website you'll find my email on that contact page and I also archive these podcasts they air live on hollow earth radio right now my time slot is thursdays 3 to 4 p.m and i archive these on my youtube channel and with visual slides of my art as visual entertainment for you show and tell i also have them on my patreon page Mixcloud and Bandcamp. So if you just go to shannonkringen.com or you just Google podcast Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen, you will find all the links that you need. And I spread this on social media everywhere. So thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again next week. And please follow your heart, follow your dreams, believe in yourself, and be yourself no matter what they say. Be yourself no matter what they say. That is from a Sting song called Englishman in New York that I love from 1987, the Dream of the Blue Turtles album. I also recently heard Jackson Brown uh, acoustic. I loved that. I forgot that he wrote that song Fountain of Sorrow, also covered by Joan Baez. I love that song Fountain of Sorrow by Jackson Brown. One time he opened for Tom Petty and I kind of took that for granted that I got to hear Jackson Brown live many years ago in 1999 I think it was so thanks for tuning in I love music maybe next week I'll share more of musical things with you I might actually get a keyboard and start playing some more musical type things and all that jazz so if you go to shannonkringen.com Kring music there's all kinds of free mp3s that you can listen to I like to share freely I share my photos under a creative commons license I share this broadcast creative commons as well as my music on my website so feel free to sample it and get free music off my website shannonkringen.com Kring music I'm also a figure model for a living so I can pay my bills doing that so I can basically give my art away for free and I think I enjoy doing that there's a, a great artist named Gwen Seamel who talks a lot about that free culture, but she makes her living as a painter, which is awesome. And she also lets her work be used for free under Creative Commons. And that helps get her art out there. And it also is just more of a free open way of sharing creative work and inspiring other people to be creative and enjoy their lives. So I hope everything's okay with my car and... Enjoy your week. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now. Crumple still skin. Amazed at the orange mount. Crumple still skin. Stripe there. Volt this. Volty rinsing it off. Undulate morph melded. Zoom away. Zoom away. Crumple still skin. Crumple still skin. Flipped. Flipped.
Flit me ball. Flit me ball. Lavender fuzz. Lavender fuzz. That's too foxy. Too lavender foxy. buddy. Lavender, lavender buddy. me. Lavender me. Could you, would you see you wish shoes? Could you wish you and, and, and the slipper. And the slipper. Wedding slipper. Wedding slipper. Wedding Slip on painted Slip spaceship on painted top, spaceship organ top. leaf, paw whisker, paw whisker on the spaceship on flower the spaceship with the gray on the gray. gray, on the gray. Barely, on spaceship gray. Buds. barely spaceship buds. Barely Passion yes. flower Passion in the hour of wave, and, and, and the sunshade shadow drum is washed clean, washed clean. Mixed, with water. mixed with water, banana slug with crumple still skin. Crumple still skin. Amazed at the orange mont. Crumple still skin. Stripe there. Volt this. Volty rinsing it off. Undulate morph melded. Zoom away. Bride as the water trickles. And the droplet festival takes place. For pop stars everywhere. With ladybug yellow and green drops. Flower paints and warped fireworks. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringling. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringling, Goddess Kring, 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 Goddess Kring,